So Peter Lindgren asked me to join him up to the north with his companion Anton to shoot some cinematic shots of his truck. And I thought, why not challenge myself and try to shoot a video completely different from what I usually do. And I think it's important to try out different styles of production sometimes. It's a great way of learning new things to, to adapt to, to your productions. So what do you think? Is the image quality out of the Galaxy S23 Ultra as good as everybody's talking about? In this video, I'm gonna tell you what I think. This is some sort of like a camera video review. So grab some snacks and enjoy and we'll get back into the studio. So this video is not sponsored by Samsung at all. I bought this and if I don't like it, I will tell you. So if we take a look at the camera app, we got the super wide, wide main camera and the 3X zoom and the 10X zoom. And I must say, I'm very impressed by the quality that comes out out of this thing. After looking at the, the little commercial shot, I am very pleased with some of the shots and especially the ones taken with the regular wide camera. So I used the pro video feature on basically every shot because I wanna have full control over the settings. Because if you just take the camera and point and shoot, the camera wants to over process the videos a bit and it will crank up the shutter speed for you to, to decrease the light coming in, to set the right exposure for you when you're filming. And this will make your footage look less cinematic than if you would record at the correct shutter speed. And I have talked about this in my previous videos about the Xperia phones, so I'm just gonna quickly mention it in this video. So in this case, we're shooting at 30 FPS, and you want to set the shutter speed to double the frame rate you're shooting at. So here, we wanna set the shutter speed to one over 60, but this will result in a very overexposed image on a bright day like this. So on a regular camera like the a7c I'm shooting this on, you can change the aperture to dial in the right exposure. So on a phone, on the other hand, the aperture is fixed and cannot be changed. There are some phones, like the Xperia Pro i, that can change the aperture, but most phones and action cameras are fixed apertures. So we're left with an overexposed image. And this is where the ND filter comes in very handy. And that is a physical filter. Hmm, where do I have one? <laughs> Found one. So it's a physical filter that you put in front of the lens like this to be able to maintain that cinematic shutter speed. And more on this is in my Xperia cinematic video. And the 8K footage looks very good in most situations. And it's very impressive to see this in a smartphone. But something I miss is the 4K 120 FPS feature that the Xperia 1 Mark IV has. So during the trip, it was a couple of times where I really wanted to capture some action shots to slow down, where shooting in 60 FPS wasn't enough. And I find shooting a video like this in 1080p is not really what I'm after. <laughs> But for most situations, 60 FPS and below is enough. So during the trip, I saw myself using the, the 1X lens maybe 80% of the time because it produces the best image quality out of all the lenses by far. <laughs> and the zoom lenses looks okay, but they need lots of light to be able to produce a good enough quality image for something like this. And the same goes for the super wide angle lens. But I guess this is an extreme test for a phone camera. So I can't be that picky really. But for saving family memories in 8K, this thing is very good. And again, the main lens performed surprisingly well in low light conditions. So here we used my car's headlights to produce this kind of backlit shot of the truck. And this made all the snow that was pouring down look really, really cool in the shot. And I'm really happy how these shots turned out. And during the trip, we did a little comparison video between this phone and Peter's Sony FX6 cinema camera. So if you're interested in seeing how they perform, you can check his video up here. So for mobile cinematography, the Xperia phones are the phones that I've been using the most. That's why I most of the times naturally compare this one to them. The pro video on this works really well. So you have all the camera settings to the right, and then you have all the other settings to the left, like frame rate settings and all the other stuff and it's easy and accessible. But I think the Xperia phones have way better user interface in my opinion, because they're designed like the Sony Alpha mirrorless system that I use on a daily basis. So I guess it comes down to personal preference here. So in the regular video mode, you have the ability to use the super steady mode, which will in theory take away the need of a gimbal. And I must say this works really, really well. 
But there is a big downside to this in my opinion. The image quality while using this is decreased a lot and it looks very overprocessed and you need tons of light for it to look good. Luckily, the regular built-in stabilization in pro video mode is very, very good. So I don't really see the need for super steady for my type of uses, at least. Take a look at this, for example. I'm hanging out with the phone in one hand out of a car window <laughs> and the footage comes out super smooth. And this is not in the super steady mode. This is just in the regular stabilization mode. And I actually had to add in a handheld effect on some of the shots because they looked like too stabilized and boring. I needed some energy and some action, which is pretty fun. So here's a quick comparison between the super steady mode on the Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the action mode on the iPhone 14 series. I think it's really nice to see that the technology is becoming so good that gimbals will be a memory of the past if we continue in this direction. Something that is also very cool to see is that if you get really close to the subject while filming, you can get a really decent out of focus background that looks very natural and, and that's because it is natural. <laughs> it's not this kind of AI blur thing. And speaking of that, the portrait video mode on this thing is it's good. I think it's becoming better and better for each like upgrade on all on all different phones. But the same goes as I mentioned earlier. The camera in this mode will crank up the shutter speed and we will lose our cinematic motion blur. But my guess is that the software needs every frame to be super sharp to be able to correctly like outline the, the subject and add the blur. So if it would be all motion blur, it will probably have a hard time like figuring out where to put the blur. So I think that's why, but I'm not sure. So what are my overall thoughts on this phone then? So I'm very glad to see that for every phone that manufacturers produce, we get better and better capabilities each time. And as a content creator, having a phone like this ready in the pocket when I don't have my regular camera with me is very, very convenient. And for somebody that has a phone like this and not a regular camera system, this is a very good way into the filmmaking world. And you can come so far with the quality out of this thing and other mo like modern smartphones. But we need to remember that in the end, it's all about the storytelling. So for the price of this thing, you can't afford a mirrorless camera and a lens. So if your main goal is to do videography, I would obviously go with a regular camera system. But I wonder when I will make the first video, when I recommend a phone over a professional camera system. Or will it ever happen? What do you think?